Last season, Fulham finished in the top half of the Premier League, finishing in 10th place. And this season, it looks like they're going to be finishing around the same as well. Massively clear of relegation. But today, we're looking to see if we can take that next step and get them back to that famous 2010 the Europa League final where they lost to Atletico Madrid. If we're looking to take things one step further and make it a Champions League rather than Europa League. And that's all while signing just under 21s only. Because as you look at the Fulham squad, it's full of some incredibly aging players. So this is in need of a massive rebirth. So welcome to the rebuild of Fulham. Well, players like Tim Ream, William, Raul Jimenez, Tom Kearney, Brent Leno and Bobby Decadova Reed are all very good. They are all over 30 and all in the Fulham first team. So we're going to have to have a big clear out and a big regeneration of this side. And as mentioned, it's going to be using under 21 signings only. So I'm very, very excited. The one problem is here at Fulham, there isn't a lot of money on the table. £16 million in transfer budget and £40 £27,000 in wage budget and as we sort the squad by the most expensive players, there's Jao Polina who we simply cannot get rid of at £63 million, and I'm hoping he's going to stay in our CDM positions but from there there's a few players around the 30s but honestly not too much money to go ahead and raise especially with some of the wonder kids. We're looking to sign in to come straight into the Premier League and play every single minute. They're going to have to be at a very decent level. The Fulham finances are looking okay. £71 million in the bank and in terms of debts and loans pretty much nothing just 28 million pounds in transfer budget so certainly some room for upside but like i mentioned we're looking to get back to that infamous 2010 season when fulham got so close to lifting the europa league and it was an extra time where Atletico madrid pipped them to the post so along the way if we can beat Atletico madrid in a cup final fantastic but looking to win the champions league at fulham that is the goal here in five years let's get into the first season the 24 24 5 season with fulham and our brand new signings and that first signing under our brand new regime is Shemin Kilikashoy to come in and be our superstar striker. Now, this guy is pretty much a brand new wonder kid on FM24 since the new latest transfer update. This guy is looking fantastic. Five-star potential, 14 finishing, 13 composure, unbelievable determination and pace and cost us just £15 million. And he is coming in as an 18-year-old to be our starting striker. A winger we've signed from Barcelona for £300,000 is Angel Alcaron. This guy looks very good, very cheap, very young and incredibly exciting. Arthur has come in from Fluminense for £900,000. I've never seen him before. He looks decent and potentially rotation option for Andreas Pereira. Arnie Engels has come in from Augsburg, another 20-year-old Belgian who looks so well-rounded with a CDM centre mid, right back, right wing back, or even right wing this guy can pretty much do it all but it's been brought in to be a backup right back to Kenny Tete but obviously could also fill in at CDM as well which is exciting and our brand new CDM to sit next to Jao Polina is Marek Verkulj. This guy is an 18 year old who is currently a two star player but has four and a half star potential extremely consistent, signed from Ajax 16 determination and he is going to be locked in at CDM in the Premier League in season one because he is going to be fantastic and I believe in Big Mark to take us to the next level when the last signing is a young goalkeeper brought in loan straight back out to his parent club which is Levski he is a Bulgarian 19 year old goalkeeper who has some very decent potential is consistent I'm not sure who will ever become our number one goalkeeper, but as a model citizen and being consistent at just 19 years of age, six foot two, I'm hoping that Palman Andreev can become our backup goalkeeper for the future. Now, obviously, we have made a whole host of sales to make just that £29 million worth of incomings come in, and it won't be is the first sale at £23.5 million. Timothy Cantania left to Al Ali for 22.5. Sasha Lukic left to Al Halal for 15. Raul Jimenez to Crystal Palace for 8.75. Steven Bender to Herber for £650,000. Oli Sanderson to Burton for 100k. George Wickens to Barnsley for 200 And Conor McAvey for 40 k as well. We've raised over £65 million. And I've actually forgot about one signing. And it's one of the ones I am most excited about. It's the first one I made. And again, it's someone that's had a big boost since that winter update. It's Jonathan Rowe from Norwich. Now, this guy never really gets signed. I've never heard anyone talk about him. But with 16 pace, 16 acceleration, consistent, great finishing, composure and determination he's going to come in and share our wing spot with William which is exciting it means Shema Gullikshoy is going to be our starting striker with Rowe and William on the wings Andreas Pereira in cam with Rafinha not Rafinha Paulinha and Vakuj in DM Robinson at left back Kenny Tete at right back Issa Diop 
and tossing Aaron Abayo as our two centre backs. Burn Leno in goal. And the backups, we're slowly getting there as well. Rodak in goal. Engels, Tim Ream, Ibane Boatwat from the Youth Academy is up here. Calvin Bassey, Harrison Reed, Tom Kearney, Willian Arthur, Adama Troy, and Rodrigo Meniz. We have had a big old clear out here at Fulham and in terms of our season prediction here in the Premier League with no European football it's 14th place about where they're finishing in real life and with massively youngster the squads and I think we're going to overachieve that as we always do so let's get into the results of season one well maybe you can't win everything with kids uh, a one loss to Brighton Spurs back to back losing to Burnley losing to City drawing to Liverpool and drawing to West Ham and our first six games here at Fulham were absolutely awful and the youngsters had been absolutely punished. It was time to try and turn things around. We battered Ipswich 4-0. We drew 2-0 to Newcastle and beat Leeds 3-1. We then lost 3-0 to Wolves. But went on a fantastic run in November with goals from Tim Ream, from Sheva Gilkeshoy and Andreas Pereira. As we beat Aston Villa, Leicester, Bournemouth and Crystal Palace. And December was fairly decent as well. We lost to Arsenal and Manchester United to be expected. We drew to Brentford but beat Everton and a massive win against Spurs at the end of December when the first half of the season was in the book and it wasn't all that bad. And we decided to carry that on for pretty much the rest of the season as well. We beat Brighton and Burnley and lost to Manchester City, so a very respectable January. We beat West Ham, lost to uh, Liverpool, drew to Ipswich, beat Leeds, beat Newcastle and drew to Chelsea. So after a very busy February, we were still looking fantastic. We beat Wolves and Bournemouth in March and lost to Aston Villa. So again, beating the teams we're meant to. We beat Leicester and Brentford, drew to Palace and Arsenal, drew to Chelsea, beat Manchester United and on the final day of the season we got absolutely battered 5-1 by Everton I don't know how that's happened but hopefully it doesn't hamper our season too much I'm not going to waste too much time in telling you how the season has gone because we've finished 7th and we've got that Europa League in season number 1 now what I want is to face a Vletico Madrid in the final and get that revenge but we are here in the Europa League which is brilliant I'm a little bit surprised we're here already I didn't quite think it would happen this soon but a fantastic season and the youngsters were absolutely brilliant as well but we will go through them in just a minute because ladies and gentlemen there's a cup final on our hands in season one and that's because in the Carabao Cup, we dispatched of Cardiff, Aston Villa, Southampton, Manchester United in the quarterfinal, and in the semi-final, a 5-0 victory over Manchester City, followed up by a 1-0 loss. We're in the final against Liverpool. And uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to win it. We've been absolutely battered. Um, but it's sad because we've just beat City 5-0 and then lost to Liverpool 4-0 in the final. It feels like, what was the point in getting to the final? You've done all that work. You've beat Manchester United. You've beat Manchester City just to lose 4-0 in a Carabao Cup final to Liverpool. And the FA Cup, well, that wasn't quite as good. We beat Carlisle 7-2, we beat Brentford 2-0, and then lost 1-0 to Manchester City, which is about the correct scoreline of us versus City, I suppose. We shouldn't really be beating them 5-0, and quite simply, I've got no idea what happened in that game, but we'll certainly take it. Our stand-up performance this season, someone that I am very, very impressed by, Andreas Pereira. 15 goals and 13 assists. Now, I don't often use him. I don't think anyone often uses him unless you do a Fulham career. Maybe it's time that changed because his stats are actually brilliant. Work rate, technique, flair, determination and corners are all fantastic. He's extremely consistent. He likes big matches. He's either footed and actually an absolute superstar. A bit of a bargain as well. £40 million doesn't seem that bad for a 29 year old his stats aren't going to go down too much because he's got 15 natural fitness so he's going to stay at a very good level for most of his career really for the next three or four years he's going to be absolutely superb a 7.27 average rating this season as well 18 goals for our youngster Semir Gilkashoy he was brilliant and Jonathan Rowe 13 goals and 7 assists 20 goal contributions in his first season Harry, uh, Harry Wilson 11 and 8 Jao Polinia 5 and 3 very glad we kept hold of him and Mark Fakuj you all doubted me at the start when I put an 18-year-old Dutchman in DM who had never played a game before. Well, four goals, two assists, a 6.8 average rating, just 0.11 away from Jao Polina in his first ever season. An absolute dub on my behalf. Seven assists for Kenny Tete and for Anthony Robinson as well is very impressive. And by the way, when did Anthony Robinson become 27 years of age? I remember being like a 23-year-old wonder kid at Wigan, I'm pretty sure. I'm thinking of the completely wrong player. Let me actually just check that. I was correct. This guy was young. 
how has he got here? I'm just getting old, I think, aren't I? But a fantastic left back that I'm very excited to have at the club. And well, because of that fantastic season, and because, as I mentioned at the start, we don't have much debt at the club, the board are very generous. 97, yes, 97 million pounds and 400,000 pounds in wage budget is coming to Fulham. So assign Declan Rice's CDM partner for the Euros this summer. Kobe Mainu is who I'm talking of, of course. Do you think he's going to get in that squad? And do you think he has a shout of being the starter next to Declan Rice? With Jude Bellingham in front, oh, that team would be fantastic. But we're here to talk about Fulham and Kobe Mainu in DM next to Jao Palinia. Now, I am very excited. It is expensive. We have spent a grand total of around 80 million pounds of installments but Kobe Mainu is here and he's obviously the cover star on the thumbnail along with someone else who we'll get into in the future but Kobe Mainu's here and he's absolutely brilliant and I'm looking to try and turn him into one of England's best DMs and a fantastic player because it's normally quite hard in FM but I'm hoping we can do that here today. A brand new young left back from Barcelona in Alex Vail was here for 14 million pounds. A fantastic wonder kid who you need to be looking at on your saves. One of the best new left backs on the game. Diego Coppola has signed from Hellas Verona, a bargain at £7 million in a raise clause, a young Italian. He looks absolutely brilliant. Juan Galto from Basel. We used him in our Basel rebuild and he was absolutely brilliant. It's the first time starting him since then. I'm excited to see what he can do for just £10 million. I brought in Sam Tickle from Wigan because I fancied a tickle, a brand new goalkeeper and he looks very good. He's very young. We've loaned him back out. We'll see if anything comes of him. Nathan Zeze has joined from FC Nantes as a backup centre-back as well. £8 million. Looks very good. And Philip Bundegaard has come in from Bromby. My scouts were screaming from the roof tops to get this guy in so i've given in and i'm excited as well because he is going to be the backup for shaman good can show you he's going to rotate on the right hand side of thing he's going to rotate in the camera and of course he'll rotate up front as well but i'm excited to see what philip can do at the club there is of course also some outgoings as well cavan bassi has left to Leeds for 23.5 million pounds and Issa Diop has left to norwich for 10.75 and there's also a few outgoings in harry wilson to al ali for 29 million pounds adama Traore to mallorca for 3.6 rodrigo maniz to las palmas for 1.5 for and Bobby Dickwood over Reed, the man who can play everywhere, has left to Palace for £15 million. But yet again, I've been done out with the fact that the signings are over two summers. So there is one more player to go through, and it's a wonder kid from a couple of FMs ago. He's known as Clates' favourite player, I believe. It's Andreas Schelder. I believe Clates developed him into being a world class right wing back. We're not going to be doing that here today. We're going to be keeping him as that unbelievable left winger. But things have been quiet this year since his move to Benfica, and for 20 23 million pounds we have picked him up and i'm excited to see what he can do the squad looks absolutely fantastic with bert leno kicking things off in goal kenny tese diego capola and tossing out of the bio and anthony robertson making up the defense with two brilliant dms in front of kobe Mainu and jao palinia juan guto andres Pereira, and shelter up make the front three behind semi gilkashoy looking at palatine andreev who has come back from his loan from Levski in goal. Arnie Engels, Zeze, Tim Ream, and Alex Bayer was the backup defenders. Luke Harris through the academy and Mark Fakuji as the backup DMs. Algaron, Arthur, Jonathan Rowe, and Philip Bundergaard come into the squad as well. And there's a lot of young players there that are going to get some serious minutes because, of course, this season we're in the Europa League, the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup, and the Premier League. Can we lift our first major trophy? Well, I don't think many people have had a 6-1 loss and a 6-1 win to kick off their bingo card this season, but that's what we do here at Fulham. Followed up by a draw to Brighton and a loss to Brentford. We then beat Hull and Burnley, lost to Bournemouth, drew to West Ham, drew to Leeds, drew to Crystal Palace, beat Wolves, drew to City and drew to Arsenal. So overall, not an awful start to the season. December did get a little bit worse though. We did draw to Forest. We did beat Aston Villa. We then lost three in a row against Newcastle, Manchester United and Brentford. We finished off by beating Spurs and Chelsea two big scalps but overall not the greatest first half of the season and certainly last year's was better but similar to last year can we make the second half of the season even better we did beat Liverpool to kick things off after that 6-1 loss and then lost 4-0 to Norwich after beating them 6-1 I don't know how that happens, 
but that's the wonderful random number generator of FM that we know and love. We then beat Brighton 3-0, beat Hull 2-0, beat Burnley 4-1, lost to Bournemouth, beat West Ham, Leeds, Palace and Wolves all in a row. Drew to City again, lost to Arsenal, beat Forest, lost to Villa. We then had a fantastic end to the season in May, drawing to Newcastle, beating United, drawing to Spurs and beating Chelsea. Could we go on to get into another European spot? You'll have to wait for that one because if we win the Europa League, it might be the Champions leagues. The league face started off with a good draw against Panathinaikos. We beat Derry and Besiktas. Lost to Atlanta. Beat CSK Sevilla. Beat Utrecht. Lost to Galatasaray and drew to Eintracht Frankfurt. Were we in the top eight? Not quite. We finished in 12th place on 14 points. Just a point away. We would have got in on goal difference as well, which is a little bit frustrating, but it means we go into the knockout playoff round. We faced up against Standard the Age and dispatched of them 4-1 and 2-1. We then faced up against Bayer Leverkusen. And it did take us 47 minutes to get us underway, but scoring against the probably German unbeaten champions this season is quite some feat. And it was Andreas Schilder up to put us 1-0 up. And Philip Bundegaard found a great ball out to Engels at the edge of the box. Back to Bundegaard, back to Engels. And what a signing he has been. An absolute superstar finish past Horodeki. Makes it 2-0 in the first leg. And if we could survive against Bayer Leverkusen away from home at the Bay Arena, we were going to be going through to the quarterfinals and the quarterfinals were looking like a winnable game a ball in from Andres Pereira and Aaron Debaio header in seven minutes a great start and Andres Pereira header corner sorry Tim Ream not quite getting on the end of it row back to Andy Pereira what a finish it was it's 4-0 at this point in aggregate but we were going to look to have a bit of a collapse. A header there at the front post from Patrick Schick. And another ball through to Onyeka. He drives down the right-hand side. Patrick Schick makes a ridiculous run. It falls to him. He grabs a second. But that was it. Lucky enough, ladies and gentlemen, the quarterfinals were on the way for Fulham. We're in the leg one against Copenhagen here at Craven Cottage. We went 1-0 down thanks to a Johansson goal. But just five minutes later, Engels fans Andreas Pereira back to Engels, back to Polina. Mainu and Pereira linking up again. That United Academy link up, making it 1-0. And we had to have a second leg away against Copenhagen. It's a tough place to go, as I know as a Manchester United fan. But lucky for us, we had a superstar on our hands in that man, Jonathan Rowe in his lovely pink kit. He drives down left hand side and puts it past Brunson to make it 1 0 in 22 minutes. And just 10 minutes later, Andres Pereira and Robertson make a fantastic triangle with Rowe. He makes it 2 0, and Fulham are advancing to the semi finals. And we're facing up against an English side in Aston Villa. We're 16 minutes into the first leg, away from home at Villa Park. Andreas Pereira puts us 1-0 up and he carries on his fantastic form from last season. Just five minutes later though, Villa do pick us back for Pau Torres' header. But that's it in the leg one. Back at Craven Cottage, if we win this game, the Europa League final and maybe some justice on our hands. Or maybe not, because someone's returned to Aston Villa and it's Tammy Abraham who puts them 1-0 up in 40 minutes. We are, however, going to get a goal back. Andreas Pereira, a corner whipped in. It drops to that man, Jonathan Rowe, again, who is an absolute magician and has made the Europa League his until we go to penalties. Abraham misses. A great start. Andreas Schilderup steps up. Misses. Emi Martinez, we know, is a penalty mastermind. Yuri Telemann steps up and scores. And Galto steps up. And Emi Martinez again saves he must be hard coded to be the best goalkeeper at penalties douglas louise scores Zhao Polinia misses and you get the gist of it ladies and gentlemen we lost on penalties to aston villa and we're not going to be going to the europa league final and aston villa of course went on to win the whole thing beating as monaco a game i feel we definitely could have won so it's absolutely gutting because what makes it worse is that next season we aren't even in europe we come in eighth place Level on points with Norwich, which would have got us Europa League. One point away from Aston Villa, who just beat us there and would have got us Champions League. Newcastle with the Champions League, three points behind them. Chelsea the Champions League, just five behind them. And Manchester United, who we finished the whole 12 points above, are going to be in the Europa Conference League. They must have won the Carabao Cup. It's absolutely heartbreaking. We do not deserve to not be in Europe. 
But for season three, we're taking a step back and we're going to have no European football, which does mean the finances are just £82 million. But it also means that this season was a little bit of a failure. Gil Kishoy got 14 and 3 and maybe we're looking for a better striker. Andres Pereira still banging in goals, 18 and 8. Jonathan Rowe, 14 and 9. Shelter up, 11 and 5. Bundegaard as a backup, 11 and 5 as well. And Maynou giving him a better average rating than Jao Polinia. Well, that makes me very happy indeed. But we're not going to waste too much time we're going to get straight in to season three's transfers but before we get there i want to say a massive thank you to the legends over on patreon you guys are literally helping support me in ways you cannot imagine the legends on screen right now are absolute heroes and i cannot thank you enough the patreon link is down below it's five pound a month to help to support the channel and you get access to all the rebuild files if you want to support for two pound a month you can as well there is no extra perks that's simply helping support me and one day maybe making this a full-time job because of your guys superb support a massive thank you and now it's time to get in to these transfers well, I think outgoings first. Bernardo has left to Wolves for £17 million. And Harrison Reed has left to Bournemouth for £19 million, which, in my opinion, is an absolute robbery. So, three signings are coming in. And a brand new keeper in Guillermo Restes is number one. And I'm very excited. We had to get him in this year. He's 21 now. We couldn't let him go another year on because he wouldn't be under 21. And just to clarify as well, if some players are 22 when sort of we are sitting here simulating, just know they were 21. I don't know if that's happened at all but obviously anyone that i've signed has been under 21 it's not my fault if they turn 22 by the time i actually get to the point of recording this bit but just so you know everyone has been an under 21 signing as they sign on the dotted line as a Fulham player and galon restes is one of them as well and he's actually 21 so i don't know why i'm waffling on about that now but that is the case our second signing is jan carlo simic a young center back a german from ac milan who i'm very excited with 16 determination and fantastic defending heading and tackling I think he could be a superstar for the future. And I just this kid called Endrick. Yeah, I've done it, all right. £42 million. His career hasn't got underway at Real Madrid or has it for Brazil. So here he is at Fulham. I suppose that's a little bit of a downgrade for him. But 15 finishing, 16 composure, great acceleration, natural fitness. We know this kid is very, very special. But he doesn't come into our team as the striker. We're actually going to put him out on that right wing position. And we're going to have a little shuffle around. Restes in goal. Kenny Tete, Adebayo, Coppola and Robertson is the same back line. With Manu and Pelinha as well. But the front four is now Endrick, Bundegaard, Jonathan Rowe and Shemir Gilgashoy. Now obviously we've got some great backups. Alcaron, shoulder up, Pereira and Quan Guto, which are all going to rotate through that front four. Mark Vagulic and Luke Harris as our backup DMs. Uh, Alex Vale, Zeze, Simic and Engel as our backup defenders with Andreev as the backup goalkeeper as well. But I think our team is set. I genuinely think this team is Champions League, not even just Europa League ready. And I think this season we could go on and do it as well. The season preview has us in 12th, which is a nice little rise. Remember last time it was 14th, we finished in 8th. 12th finishing 6th last season that's Champions League football so let's see if season 3 with no Europe if we can do it all based on the start of this season maybe not and as we go through this season you'll realise what a stinker it has been we beat Brentford drew to Liverpool beat, uh, lost to Nottingham Forest we beat Spurs 5-1 so we can look absolutely fantastic just to then lose 2-0 to Burnley. We beat Norwich. We lost to United. We lost to Villa. We beat Newcastle. We lost to Palace. We beat West Ham. We drew to Bournemouth and Leicester. And then December was just absolutely awful. We beat Wolves. We beat... Well, no, sorry. We lost to Wolves. We beat Luton, which, I mean isn't really anything is it we then drew to Everton and we had some fantastic games all lost by a goal we beat lost to Chelsea 3-2 lost to City 5-4 lost to Arsenal 2-1 but could we turn it all around in the second half of the season well we did lose to Liverpool 3-1 but there wasn't many losses after that we beat Brentford 3-0 Nottingham Forest 2-1 United 3-2 lost 5-0 to Spurs. Again, I don't know what's happening. We beat them 5-1, lose 5-0. Who knows? Classic FM. We beat Burnley 2-1, drew to Norwich 0-0, beat Villa, lost to Newcastle, and then went unbeaten. We beat Palace 5-0, drew to West Ham, beat Bournemouth, beat Leicester, beat Wolves, beat Luton, beat Everton, drew to Chelsea, beat City 4-1, and beat Arsenal 2-1. And the season is in the books, and after an awful start of ups and downs everywhere, 64 points 
sits us in sixth place, which yes, it is not the Champions League, I am fully aware, but it does bring us closer and still in that European stage and back into the Europa League, which is what we want to win this year. We do not want to win the Champions League in the three. Well, we do want to win the Champions League in the three. Well, let me relax that because that is certainly the goal. But winning the Europa League will be very nice as well. When making amends for that 2010 loss in extra time against Atletico Madrid. Sorry to keep bringing that up, Fulham fans. But I'm very happy to be sitting in sixth place of the other cups as the same as last season. I didn't even touch on it. We're pretty stinky. Four friends in both this season against Sheffield Wednesday and Chelsea. But the team has had a nice bit of progression. 20 goals this year for Shemin Gil. 16 and 8 for Andreas Pereira again, who was outshone Endrick. I mean, who would have told you that at the, you know this season, Andreas Pereira outshining Endrick? I wouldn't have believed you. He got 10 and 7, and maybe is a bit of a flop, but hopefully he can grow. Philip Bundegaard, 9 and 5 again. Jonathan Rowe, a big drop off to 5 and 6. Manu and Jao Polina, both above a 7 average rating, as has Andreas Pereira, which shows the core of our team is very strong. But there is some positions to improve on. As you can see in the team, we're looking for a brand new right back, a brand new DM to potentially partner Manu as Palina is now like 31 years of age and a superstar winger to hop into this left wing position. Luckily, the boards have given us £60 million again. Finances are looking okay. We are spending a lot of money, but luckily for us, there's not a lot of debt. Just £1 million in transfer debt. No net debt whatsoever. I do keep asking the board as well about increasing the club info and bits. We have got up to a four and a half star in training facilities, a four star in new facilities, and three and a half star in youth recruitment. But it's time to make some signings and season four to see if we can build a Europa League league winning side. So how does new Manchester City wonder kid Claudio Echeverri sound for £27.5 million? I think it sounds brilliant and he looks absolutely brilliant at that as well. We've also signed Aidan Heaven from Arsenal for £19.75 million. Hopefully he can bring some heaven into that DM role. Sam Parker from Swansea for 14.25. Emir Goike from Silver Sport is a new wonder kid that I've never seen for £16 million. Big Sam from the Southampton rebuild. I had to bring him in if you haven't seen that Southampton video this guy turns into a superstar it might be too late in this one but we shall see 15 million pounds has been sent on him John Melberg for 12 million pounds from RB Salzburg as well and finally it's Rodrigo Mora from FC Porto for 21.5 million pounds so there has been some huge outgoings including Andreas Pereira to Al Nassar for 32 million pounds now yes it's a sad one to see but at 32 years of age I think it's time for Andy Pereira to go. Kenny Tete for 22.5 as well to El Casidia. Uh, Juan Guto is left to Wolves as well for 17.5 million pounds. We have brought in some better, some younger and some more exciting wingers and the team is now looking like so with Restes in goal. Engels coming in as our starting right back with Capola and Melberg as our starting centre back partnership. Robinson at left back. We didn't sell Polina so he keeps his spot next to Menu in DM. Endrick, Bundegaard and Mora make our backup three to Shimon Gilgishoy who is now a four and a half star striker and hopefully can kick on like he did last season. Backups, Andreev, Sam Parker, Nathan Zeze, Arabayo, Alex Bayo, Verkulj, Heaven, Rowe, Shoulderup, Emil Goikoi and Escheveli. We are looking good and we have now got a full squad ready for the Europa League. Again, the Premier League predicting us down in 10th place but if we keep rising like we are as literally worked last time, 14th to 8th, 12th to 6th, 10th to the top four and qualifying for the Champions League for the last season. That's if, of course, we don't win the Europa League or the FA Cup. So let's get into it for season four. And boy, oh boy, with the start of the season and an exciting team like this, Maybe top four isn't the only thing we can go for. We beat Southampton, drew to no castle before winning five in a row, beating Villa, West Ham, Brentford, Forest, and Ipswich. Realistically, all clubs we should be if we are going for the top four. We did lose to Palace and Brighton, but beat Bournemouth in October. But in November, beat United and drew to Liverpool. So getting some big scalps in there as well as beating Wolves 3-0. December was also brilliant, including unbeaten. Beating Burnley and Manchester City, drawing to Chelsea, beating Brentford and Everton, and drawing to Spurs. Just two losses and five draws in the start of the season. Things were looking on the up for the mighty Fulham. And January was absolutely mental because we beat West Ham 9-2. I don't know how it's happened, but it has. We've also beat Newcastle 4-2 and lost to Southampton 1-0 and lost to Forest 2-1. And then in February, didn't win for four games. Drawing to Villa, losing to Ipswich, losing to Arsenal and losing to Palace. 
I don't know either, ladies and gentlemen. It's just the beauty of FM. We beat Bournemouth 1-0, drew to Brighton, beat United and Wolves in March. We then drew to Liverpool, lost to Arsenal, beat Burnley, lost to Chelsea and finished the season drawing to Chelsea, drawing to Everton and drawing to Spurs. The league was decent, but could we lift a trophy? Well, it wasn't going to be the Caraba Cup because in the third round, we lost to Palace 5-3. And well, the FA Cup got off to a decent start, beating Aston Villa 4-1, beating York 6-1, beating Bristol Rovers, but losing to eventual winners, Manchester City 1-0. Our only hope was the Europa League. Well, the league phase this time was absolutely brilliant. And of course, we finished in the top eight with victories over Aruka, Schalke, Sporting, Gadabag, FCSB, Maccabi Tel Aviv and Juventus while drawing to Galatasaray. The round of 16 was a little bit shaky to kick things off. We lost two little toys at Alkmaar, but beat them 4-1 on home soil. And then we scraped through the quarterfinals, beating SK Rapids 1-0 on aggregate, setting up the semifinals against Real San Sebastian. Now, it's not Atletico Madrid, but getting a little bit of payback against the Spanish side would be brilliant. And more refined Shimon Gilkishoy to make it 1-0 away from home in 44 minutes. Aradabayo then finds Bundegaard on the right-hand side. A great ball to Mora, who was an absolute renovation this season. And Semir was there again to make it 2-0 in 71. Polinia found Rowe, who found Mora, who found Bundegaard. That link-up seems to be absolutely vital. And he scored an absolute screen up past Alex Romero, making it 3-0. But that wasn't the biggest win. We are going to absolutely destroy them here at Craven Cottage. Mora found a ball into Claudio Echeverri to make it 1-0 in 9 minutes. And we're finally going to see a goal from Endrick. Aradabayo linking him up down the right-hand side. He's then going to cut inside and put it past Romero to make it 2-0 in 29 minutes. And just for half-time, we wanted to make it 6-0 in aggregate. So we did. Aradabayo flowed it in. Semi Gilkeshoy was there to make it 3-0. They are going to get a goal back. Maybe they could do the biggest come back of them all it's a great goal to be fair to him and Restes probably should have been more on his line but it's just time to punish them more if that's what you do against us we'll batter you some great link up play between Endrick and Echeverri grabs a second Endrick then finds Aradabayo playing on this right back it was fantastic he drove into the box went all the way in fact and scored himself to make it 7-1 on aggregate no 8-1 on aggregate actually at this point Echeverri found Endrick Endrick drove into the box and found Shemu again who I believe finally makes it 9-1 on aggregate, which was the final scoreline and maybe the biggest ever semi-final aggregate of all time. We're in the final against another London club. It was Fulham against Chelsea here at the Parc de Prince, and Anthony Robinson, the man we touched on at the very start of this rebuild, got us 1-0 up in 25 minutes, put it past Robert Sanchez. Chelsea were quite good though. Rich James found Enzo Fernandez for a great finish to make it 1-0. 65 minutes on the clock. A nice bit of build-up play. Engels finds Jonathan Rowe to make it 2-1. And that is it. Europa League winners. We've done it. We've beat what we couldn't do in 2010. And Fulham are Europa League winners. Which means... We're in the Champions League for the final season of this rebuild, which have not been in yet, but it's very exciting. We would have got there anyway because 67 points was enough for it. It's finishing in the top four, but Brentford did better on 70. Just classic FM things. Just another team outshining us. Again, we couldn't have our moment, could we? Brentford in third. A very good season. But we have finished in fourth. We've won a trophy. And the Champions League for season five. How exciting is that going to be? We've also got a grand £60 million to spend. But honestly, this team is absolutely cooking. Gilkeshoy, 22 goals. Bundegaard, 20 and 11 assists. Echeverri, 16 and 7. Endrick, 12 and 13. Rodrigo Mora, 10 and and 14. Emre Goke, 10 and 7. Anthony Robertson, 9 and 7. 5 and 17 for Engels as well. And the whole team was absolutely cooking. And in season 5, I was very excited to get into. Well, I didn't want to make too many signings this summer, but when your best fullbacks both leave you in Tosin Aradabayo for £30 million to Brentford and Anthony Robertson to Al Halal for £33 million. We had to go ahead and make some replacements. So Jaden Megahoma came in for Southampton as our brand new left back. He's young. He's a little bit raw, but he does look good. And I'm excited to see what he can do for £30 million. Ahmad Aziz is our first region. I believe we've signed for the entire rebuild. It's because he's got 17 finishing. He looks brilliant. He's also incredibly consistent. Got decent composure and good physicals. And it really is a brilliant signing for you guys who do pick this up from the Patreon. And that is pretty much what I've gone from here. Epido has come in from 
from Air Palmerias with 17 technique, 16 passing and 16 vision for £10 million. And Sergio Rubiano is one of the best young goalkeepers I've ever seen and keeps getting recommended to me. So I picked the bullet for £15 million and he looks pretty good. 17 handling, 16 reflexes. Yeah, he's going to be quite a good little goalkeeper for you guys over there. A brand new centre-back in Jacob Nunston comes in as our new starter with great anticipation, bravery and concentration. 16 passing as well as 18 balance. This guy is a true ball-playing defender. He was expensive at 38, but does look brilliant. And a brand new right-back as well in Nicolas Tisserand comes in to be the backup to our new starter in goal. Restez Tisserand as the starter. Sam Parker stays as our backup, sorry. Capola, Nunston and Mega Homer as our back four. Palinia and Mainu keep that DM position there. But the front four is where it's exciting. Endrick, Bundegaard, Morak, Gilgashoy. The backups, Aziz, Goikoy, Echeveri and Rowe are also so exciting. Heaven and Vakulish in DM backups. Vale, Melberg, Zeze, Sam Parga and Rubiano. This season, I'm very excited. If we're in the top 10, we're winning the league. I'm calling it. We're ninth. We're winning the league. Season five, we're winning the league. And I tell you what, going unbeaten in August gives you a very good chance. We beat West Ham and Palace, drew to Brighton and Villa. We beat Sheffield United and Southampton in September. We did lose to uh, Newcastle. We also lost to Leicester in October, but beat Bournemouth and Norwich. And then November, lost to United and Everton, all by one goal, by the way, which is very frustrating. And then went on a fantastic run through November and December, beating Arsenal, Forest, Chelsea, City, Sheffield United, Spurs and Brighton, drawing to Liverpool and drawing to Brentford. The first half of the season was in the books. It probably wasn't title winning form, but it was certainly decent. And if we could have a good second half of the season, you never know. Some of the points totals this season have been pretty darn low. So a draw against West Ham, a victory against Palace, a loss to Newcastle and a draw to Villa didn't make things look so promising. But how does seven games in a row without losing sound? With six wins against Southampton, Leicester, Norwich, United, Everton and Arsenal and drawing to Bournemouth, losing to Forest, beating City, beating Liverpool, losing to Spurs, losing to Brentford and beating Chelsea. We had finished off the first season, uh, well, first half of the, well, the first actual Premier League and we managed to get top four for next season. 75 points for so for you guys on Patreon, there is the Champions League for season six, etc. If you are going to be carried on, which obviously Obviously, down in the description down below, £5 a month. It's great fun if you do go ahead and do that. There is, however, a competition I think we need to talk about. Because Europe could be where Fulham come to life. We drew to Monaco. We then beat Club Bruges 4-1 and beat Final 7-0. Drew free with Porto. Drew with Galatasaray. Beat Lask. Beat Lazio. Lost to Real Madrid. Which means we weren't quite in the top eight of the league phase. But we were going to be facing up a Galatasaray in the knockout 16. We beat them 2-0 and drew 1-0. We faced Arsenal in the round of 16. Beat them 2-0 and 2-1. And then faced up against PSG in the quarterfinals. We're at Craven Cottage. It was our Turkish winger who got us off to a one goal lead, Emir Goykoy. And that is all she wrote for this one. And away at the Parc de Prince, it was him again. This guy, an absolute superstar and loves scoring in big matches. A 2-0 lead on aggregate. We were going to concede a goal in the 90th minute thanks to a Gonzalo Ramos header. We were through to the semi-finals of the Champions League. And well, I don't quite know what to say. I really didn't expect this to happen. We were looking, you know, we scraped through against Galatasaray. We scraped through against Arsenal. We scraped through against PSG. And we faced Bayern Munich, and I thought things were going to come to an end. If you've not noticed the background, two goals have gone in already. A third is going to happen here in the 33rd minute. Tissord finds Bundegaard in the middle to make it 3-0 in the first half here at Craven Cottage, which apparently is where European football was meant to be played. Mora finds Alex Vale, one of our very first signings. It makes it 4-0 in 37 minutes. We, we want a fifth. I, I honestly don't know what happened. Bundegaard and Echeverry linking up and he flies at home to make it 5-0. Bayern Munich are going to go and get a goal back. Adam Asnu down the right hand side is going to find Brian, uh, Brian Zaragoza to find Oscar Gluck to make it 5-1. But here at Craven Cottage, we got the job done. And away at the Allianz, I don't even need to show you the highlights. We peppered them as well. A 3-1 victory, a brace for Rodrigo Mora and a goal from Marc Vakulj. We're in the final of the Champions League and Barcelona stood in our way. That is winnable. And well, winnable is exactly what it was. It took just one goal, but Tisseron found Bundegaard in the middle to make it 1-0 to Fulham. And that was all that happened in this game. But you can see from the stats, 
We absolutely dominated Barcelona. 12 shots to their two and absolutely smacked them off the park. The team finishing this rebuild, the under-21 Fulham rebuild only to lifting a Champions League. Restes in goal, Tessand at right back, Vale at left back, Melberg and Coppola at centre back, Polinia and Mainu in DM, Endrick, Kiligashoy, Mora and Bundegaard up front. This season was absolutely fantastic. We didn't win the FA Cup, we got a semi-final by Newcastle. We also didn't win the Carapa Cup. We got quarterfinal by Spurs. I couldn't care less. We've lifted the Champions League with Fulham, signing only under 21s. And our superstar was Philip Bundegaard, 28 goals and 5 assists. Endrick with 15 and 14. Emre Gokoy, as mentioned, was also brilliant, 13 and 9. Gilgashoy, 13 and 12. 17 assists for Claudio Echeverri, 11 for Alex Vale. Jonathan Rowe, a superstar for a while, as Ray Rodrigo Moral, 10 and 7. And two starts, 18 off the bench. 10 goals for Ahmed Azizi. Thank you for watching the video. If you do want to carry on this Fulham save, as mentioned, the Patreon is linked below. It's been an absolute pleasure rebuilding Fulham. Let me know who you want up next, and I'll speak to you next time.